Our next speaker is Steve Tanner from the National Snow and Ice Data Center in Boulder, Colorado. And his presentation is about supporting climate science with cryospheric data from NSIDC Snow and Ice Data Center DAC. Steve, your presentation is up and the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so, so I am from the uh, uh, National Snow and Ice Data Center and uh, it, this is larger, the NSIDC is larger than the DAC, but what a DAC is, is a NASA center uh, for holding the satellite and remote sensing data that NASA gets. It's a distributed active archive center. And there's about a dozen of these around, around the country. And I point that out to you guys because all of the data that NASA gathers uh, is freely available to you guys. And almost all of it is held at one of these 12 or so DACs. And so uh, as part of the DACs, we, we, we strive to make this data easily accessible, easily findable by this community. Uh, and here we are in Boulder, Colorado. We don't have an Eiffel Tower, but that's a it's very nice to uh, But in terms of the National Science Data Center, uh, we're not just a, a library or a data archive. We also have a lot of uh, scientific research in the highest group. And this is very important to our data set because these are we're a consumer of our own product. And I think that makes us a stronger center for that uh, because we run into the same problems that our users run into, which kind of keeps us a little more honest on how we're dealing with our data. And uh, as NSIDC, uh, we, we deal with you know, the National Store Nice Data Center. Deal primarily with snow and ice traps. But um, as part of the DAC within NSIDC, these are the primary uh, sources of information that we do. That's the microwave data, uh, infrared data, and some other satellite and airborne uh, data that I'm going to talk a little bit about. And I was going to talk about uh, some of the problems we were running into with this and also go into some of the tools that we developed. But based upon the things that I'm hearing here, I'm not going to change this up what I was planning to talk about. Very quickly, uh, the NSIDC is not the only NASA DAC. The satellites that we deal with are not the only satellites. Here's a list of all the uh, recent and upcoming satellites that NASA is looking at launching. And you can see they, they cover the... Uh, I can realize you guys don't know what all these satellites are, but there's a lot of different instruments and stuff going on. And so there's a lot of data that you guys can go full. Um, yeah. So uh, I was going to talk a little bit about SMAP and about ISAT too. So SMAP is a soil moisture uh, satellite that NSIDC will be pulling the data from. So it's soil moisture, but also the freeze thaw status of, uh, of that. There's another satellite called ISAT-2, which is going to measure ice from the satellite. NASA has to cover um, But uh, this will be pulling in about a terabyte of data a day. Uh, that we're going to be pulling in from ISAT-2. I mentioned these two very quickly because these are big satellite missions where the data management is planned out years in advance. And there's a lot of infrastructure built around it. But the next program is Operation Ice Bridge which are airborne missions with a lot of different uh, instruments that a lot of different organizations handle, and they're just all over the map. They're used to throwing their data in a drawer or leave it on a laptop. And it sounds very similar to some of the problems that, uh, that I've heard about here. And so I want to talk a little, instead of going into what I was going to do, I think I'll talk a little bit more about this and some of the things that we're doing uh, relative to that. And so I think I'm going to stop right here and talk about what we were doing or what we are doing with ISAT, uh, sorry, with the ice bridge, and, um, and some of the problems we ran into and what we're doing to address them. The main thing is when we started Operation Ice Bridge, we didn't really know or we really didn't have a plan for how we were going to handle the data. And so we had to stop about halfway through the program and say, we need some discipline on this. And so we went back to the instrument people. And there was some friction, let's say, <laughs> but uh, but they did agree to <coughs> adhering 
to specific data formats and also generating a significant amount of metadata associated with your product. Because of that, now the iSpreach products are much more searchable, uh, they're beginning to be subsetable. There, there's a lot of new uh, ways to use the data that's coming along. And that required a pretty tight connection between the instrument science community and our data management science. And again, there was some friction here, but we worked our way through it, and, and I think that has made the program much better. And for NASA, this is a little bit different, because again, with satellite programs, you, know, you have lots of lead time, and you have a, a lot more ability to work with that. Uh, so I think with IceBridge, that, that helped us tremendously, getting the support from the uh, instrument people to go back and generate that. So, I'm just going to go ahead and a couple minutes. Do a couple minutes. Um, so, for example, one of the things that we've developed is a new search engine that's uh, much more intelligent about ranking the findings and helping users find the data they want. Having adequate metadata is critical for making this new search engine work. It would not have worked for us. And this is beyond I, I, I mean, that's pretty part of this. So, we're all good. We also have a search and order system. We also have the ability to come in and just grab the data via FTP. And then we uh, also have some visualization tools to help people filter through the data. Again, all of this is predicated on having adequate metadata. That means that we can do format. It means that we can do subsetting. And that those sorts of capabilities that in the past we haven't typically done as a that. In the past, we've typically just been a a library and you come and get big chunks of data rather than coming in and, and trying to zero in on back and forth. Uh, look, that also has sort of an education outreach. An example of that is the satellite observations for Arctic change that uh, you can go in and interactively play with the data and see what the trends over the Arctic have been over the past 30 years. Uh, and we also uh, have product user guides. And we also have user services so that people can call in and complain and tell us what they don't like. And, uh, and this has also been critical. 